Hello everyone and welcome to RootTube. In this video, I'm going to go through an example of the Hungarian algorithm, which comes from the Further Maths Study Design under the module Networks and Decision Mathematics. Okay, so in this example, we can clearly see here we have uh, four people, which is indicated by P1, P2, P3, P4. And then we have four jobs that those uh, four people are to be allocated to. So the jobs are labelled in the columns as J1, J2, J3, J4. And then the uh, values in the table indicate or represent how long it takes each person to perform or complete each job. So, for example, person one takes 20 minutes to complete job one. Uh, they take 22 minutes to complete job two, tw uh, 14 to complete job three, and 24 minutes to complete job four, and so on. So our job is obviously to perform the Hungarian algorithm to work out or to allocate which person to do which job to then minimize the amount of time. So it's all about efficiency, really. So that's sort of what the Hungarian algorithm does. Um, we want the optimal allocation to then obviously, in this case, allocate the correct people for the, for the correct job, therefore minimizing the amount of time spent on those jobs. So the first thing we need to do is we need to perform a, a row reduction. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is identify each or well, let's start with the first row so person one identify the lowest value in the first row and then subtract all the values in that row by that circled value which is clearly 14 so 14 is the lowest value in that row so therefore we're going to subtract every value in that row by 14 so therefore we should have i might change color therefore we have for our 20 minus 14 gives us six then we have 22 minus 14 gives us 8, and then 14 minus 14 gives us 0, and then 24 minus 14 gives us 10. So there's the first row done. Then we go to the next one. The next smallest value in that row is 12. So then we perform the same thing, but now to the second row. So now 20 minus 12 gives us 8, 19 minus 12 gives us 7, 12 minus 12 gives us 0, and then 20 minus 12 gives us eight. Once again, we go to the third row, so the third person. This time, the lowest value, the smallest value is 10. So therefore now, what we do in the third row is we subtract all the values, all the elements by 10. So 13 minus 10 gives us three, then uh, 10 minus 10 gives us zero, then 18 minus 10 gives us eight, then 16 minus 10 gives us six, and then we need to do the last one. We'll just circle that 10, and then the last one, the smallest value is nine. So now, again, follow the same steps, but this time subtract all the values in the final row by nine. So now it's 22 minus nine gives us 13, then it's 23 minus 9 gives us 14. Then 9 minus 9 gives us 0. And then 28 minus 9 gives us 19. So there we have performed a column reduction. Uh, sorry, a row reduction, not a column reduction, a row reduction. Now what we need to do is we need to find the minimum number of lines required to cover all the zeros in the table. So we can see we've only got, what's that, one, two, three, four zeros. So again, it doesn't matter which way you draw the lines as long as you find the minimum. So what we could do is we can just draw a line like that. That's one line, and then the second line going through person two. Okay, so we can clearly see the number of lines doesn't match the amount of people. We've only drawn two lines and covered all the zeros, and we have four people to delegate their jobs, so therefore, we cannot, it's not time to allocate, okay? So we need to go to the next step, which is to perform a column reduction. Now what we need to do is in that table, now we need to identify the smallest value in each column and subtract that with every other value in that corresponding column. So we're doing the same thing as a row reduction, although now we're doing it in columns as opposed to rows. So now we're doing it in jobs as opposed to the people. So if a column has one or more zeros in it, that column is not going to change because you're just going to subtract zero. And obviously if you subtract zero, 
uh, any number by zero, it just gives you that specific number. So you can see the middle two columns, so J2 and J3, so job two and job three, they both have zeros in them, so therefore they are gonna stay the same. So that's gonna stay as eight, that's gonna stay as seven, that's gonna stay as zero, and that's gonna stay as 14. And the same for job three, zero, zero, eight, and zero. Now, in the first column, job one, the smallest value is three. So we're going to subtract every single value in that column by three. So the first one is going to be six minus three gives us three, eight minus three gives us five, three minus three gives us zero, and then 13 minus three gives us 10. And in the final column, the smallest value in that column is six. So therefore, we're going to subtract every value in that column by six. So therefore, 10 minus six is four, eight minus six is two, six minus six is zero, 19 minus six is 13. And now we're going to do the same thing we did before. We're going to now find the minimum number of lines again required to cover all the zeros. Hopefully it's four. And then we're ready to allocate. If we have a look, again, doesn't matter how you draw them. It has to be the minimum. So in this case, we've just drawn two lines like so. And again, same number as before, so we're not ready to allocate. Okay, so now, now what we need to do, we need to move on to the next step, which is to identify the lowest value. I'm just picking a different color to choose. Let's go with red. So we need to identify the lowest value that is not covered by the line or, or any line. Okay, so the lowest value that's not covered by the lines. So in this case, if we have a look at the third table, the lowest value that's not covered by the lines is two. So we need to subtract all the uncovered values by two. All of the numbers that are covered by the line remain except for the value where the two lines meet, that little intersection there. And we're gonna add the two to that value. Okay, so there's a few things we need to remember. So as the three in the top left-hand corner, person one, job one, is uncovered, we're gonna subtract by two, which is gonna give us one. Then the eight is uncovered, so then we're gonna subtract by two, which makes six. The zero stays a zero because it's covered. The four is going to be subtracted by two, which gives us two. The five is also subtracted. The seven is subtracted also. The zero is covered, so it doesn't get touched, it stays the same. The two is uncovered, which subtracts. The zero and the zero stay the same. But now remember what I said before about the eight. If it's at the intersection where the two lines meet, you actually add the value of the two. So you don't subtract like you would with the rest, so then that becomes 10. Because that eight that we circled, we're gonna add the lowest value to it. And then the zero stays the same. The 10 becomes eight because you're subtracting two. The 14 becomes 12, you're subtracting two. The zero stays a zero. And then the 13 becomes 11. Okay, now what we're gonna to need to do, we're going to need to once again see if we can, or we're gonna to need to find the minimum number of lines to cover. And again, hopefully it's four. If not, we need to move on to something else, which we'll see in a second. So again, now we're gonna see if we can cover the line, the, all the zeros with the minimum number of lines. And in this case, we're gonna draw one line here, one line here, and one line like so. So now we can still see the minimum number of lines is still only three. So we still can't allocate so what we need to do, we need to do the exact same thing we just did. So we need to now do the same thing we just did to identify the lowest value that's uncovered, which in this case is going to be one. And again, go through the same steps as we did previously. 
So we're going to subtract all the uncovered values. So 1 minus 1 gives us 0. Then 6 minus 1 gives us 5. Then that 0 stays the same. It's not at an intersection. It's not where the two lines meet. The 2 is subtracted by 1, which gives us 1. Then the 3, it's covered, so it does not change. The 5 is also covered. Does not change. The 0, well, that's at an intersection where the two lines meet, so we add the lowest value, which is to add by 1, so 0 plus 1 is 1. And then the 0 is covered, stays as a 0. Then the 0 is covered, that stays the same, that stays the same. The 10 is now at an intersection again. So we're going to add, which makes 11. And then the last 0 is covered. And then the 8 becomes a 7, we subtract by 1. The 12 becomes an 11. The 0 is covered, and then the 11 becomes a 10. Now we have finally, hopefully, finished the end, uh, reached the end, and we are now see how many lines again. We have one, and then we have two, three, four. So finally, we have reached a point where we can allocate our jobs to specific people, which we'll do on the next slide. Okay, so now that we have worked our way to be able to allocate, now we can actually draw and actually work out who is going to be allocated to which job. Okay, so if we can have a look through the first row. So remember, it's oh, we're only worried about the zeros. So that means that there are only two zeros in the first row, which means that person one can only be allocated to job one and job three. So they can be allocated to job one or job three. The next line, the next row, sorry, is person two can only be allocated to job four. Person two can only be allocated to job four because that is the only zero in that row. The next person, now if person three can do three jobs, we have to allocate them to one of them. Okay, so they can do job one, they can do job two, or they can do job four. And then person four can only do, uh, the orange can only do job three. Okay, so now it looks a little bit confusing. You just need to keep, I might just get rid of that one and do that one again. So we can see clearly that person three can do job one as well. Okay, so now, if we can hopefully see straight away, person three is the only person that can do job two. So they have to be allocated to that job because no one else can do that job. There's only one line going to that job. So that means person three must do job two, which is this one here. Then we look at Person one and person three are the only people that can do job one. But now person three has already been allocated to job two. That leaves person one as the only person to be able to do job one. So that means person one, which we'll just write as P1, must be allocated to job one. And then we've now got to fill in the blanks with P2 and P4, which is person one and person four. So now if we have a look at person two, well, person two could only do one job. They only had one line, which is that green one, going to job four. So that means person two can only do job four. When we're gonna fill that in, so that means person two can only do job four, which therefore leaves person four for job three. Now we have all that information. Now you'll see in the top right hand corner, I have the original table from the start of the question. Okay, so now we're going to circle the relevant values and then work out the actual minimum time for all these jobs to be completed. Okay, so person one is going to be completing job one, person two is going to be completing job four, person three is going to be completing job two, 
and then person four is going to be completing job three. Okay, so now what we need to do, we've got to add up all those values, and that is the minimum number of, oh, that's the minimum amount of time taken for these four people to complete those four jobs. So we've allocated and now actually worked out the minimum time required to complete the four jobs. So it's going to be 20 plus 20 plus 10 plus 9, which equals a total of, what's that, 40, 59, 59 minutes. So you've got job allocations and the minimum number of time to complete the four jobs by the four people. If you enjoyed the video, please feel free to like it and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thanks again for watching the video and thanks for all of your support.